let's just turn the shit off. You people have clearly showed that you cannot responsibly use these tools, so they just need to be taken away. Then when they do that, guess what they're going to say? They're censoring us! Lottie, this this season is getting review bombed. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, would you like to speculate on why it's getting review bombed? And like the, sort of, the, sort, the sort of comments that are, are are explaining why they're giving it one star reviews. I saw it today, but then I ignored it because a bunch of people like got on the person. When they were like, they made Frenchie gay. And like immediately the first thing that came out was like, he was literally gender fluid since, I mean, not gender fluid, uh, bisexual since the first time we ever saw him. He was literally naked in bed with both a man and a woman. Yeah, but you know what? he was kissing on both. But you know what? Uh, That would require you to like, you know, actually fucking pay attention to what you're you're watching and also not be a chud that just loses your shit because you see some people different than you like chill out <laughs> but it's it's great like it's that like oh they made frenchy gay mike like, like chill like it didn't bother me that him and kamiko are not they're in a platonic you know like relationship they're just they really love each other but it's not like sexual right but it's not just the Frenchy gay thing. It's it's the whole outright like I guess at some point Kripke and and the writers were like, you know what? We've been too subtle with our uh, with our allegory. We need to just straight up say what the fuck we're saying. <clears throat> and so that's why I said it feels like they just put capes on our world because they they are throughout this ep- the, the episodes. They are quite literally just taking things that people have actually said in our world or signs or whatever kind of political statements, and they're just putting it in straight up verbatim. No, you know, no uh, putting any flowery language, no hiding. The, no, they're just putting it in there. And I think some people are sort sort of realize like, wait a minute, that's that's us. That's me. That's, that's things I said. Why am I the bad guy in this in this series? And maybe they don't feel so comfortable about it. <laughs> so what did I say? Well, goddamn, what fucking show have you been watching? I don't. I feel like you you had an idea about. Maybe you just watching the for the fights or or the head exploding or something like that. <clears throat> or maybe you thought, well, actually the liberals are the ones that you know are doing all the bad things. Clearly the soups are liberals. Are they really? Like it, it's bought. You th- you really think in our world right now, there are corporations that are like, you know, there are mega corporations the size of Vought, which Vought is like Amazon size or bigger. You think they're really run at the top levels by people who are like bleeding heart liberals? Okay. Sure. That's the way capitalism works. Uh, it's It's exhausting. Uh, the fact that people are upset about that could really, really, really show the uh, that should that that say that should be a bad look on them that they are they feel attacked by a TV show. I mean, like, that, I mean to be if, fa- to be fair, if you are you know if you feel like you're being exposed, like no, I mean if if it in a bad way if you're being exposed in a bad light you know there there was a really good um was a really good quote and I, i'm not gonna say it verbatim but we're essentially say just like firecracker why are you well what should what are you do why are you doing this what are you selling and she's like I, i'm selling purpose because these people ain't got shit no one seems to care about them <clears throat> and they feel better about me making them feel like they're fighting you know, they're warriors against an evil cult rather than just being nobodies that nobody will fucking care about when they're gone. And I was just like, that's a 
pretty good encapsulation of the gr- whole griff, you know, because she's a grifter. She, she at that at the end of it, she's a grifter. There's lots of grifters yeah. in this world who's, you know, who are going to sell you this, you know, big story to make you feel like you're big and important in a world where you're clearly not. And, you know, you feel like you're left behind. So you got to, uh, you can't attack the people who are leaving you behind. You can't latch on to something that makes them take you seriously. So you latch on to something else that, you know, doesn't have any real stakes in your life that you can be mad about safely. It's, I mean, it's, it makes sense. Um, but I mean, the, the, the IMDb is not terrible, but the Rotten Tomatoes is apparently bad and people are just like one starring. Okay, cool. Like the shit doesn't mean like to me, it's good because it's, it's the, a further nail in the coffin of these online reviews. Cause the online reviews are garbage by right. And I say that as, we are two people online reviewing something, right? Uh, re- relatively anonymously, but no, these review sites where you just you know one two whatever stars and you leave a comment, garbage. They they are not useful in gauging whether or not something is for you, or whether or not you should watch something. Uh, I mean, Lottie, I know you don't pay attention to them, right? But you know, does do those numbers matter to you at all? No, it's literally the boys. Like, like you said, like I really think that online reviews are becoming, are literally becoming a thing of the past, in the sense of, in the sense of that you can't like, you're not going to start seeing stuff like this happen anymore. Where you're gonna, where they're gonna, you're gonna start seeing like reviews actually on the platform. Like, for example. When it comes to a video game, nobody looks at like Metacritic or anything anymore. They look at uh, what is those Steam because you cannot review a game on Steam unless you played at least twenty hours of the game. They, you can't review a game unless you own it and play twenty hours of it. So, so your review actually hold some weight you, see, you can't just review bomb a game you can review bomb in the sense of like you know like when you know sony was doing that dumb stuff with hell divers where people change their review from good to negative that is a form of review bombing but when you talk about review bombing in the sense of like people just getting bots and just different instances of just making this thing a one-star review because they're mad at it those like like i said nobody really looks at rotten tomato anymore and like you said i think it's it's really going away because like i said it's already died in video games no one looks at metacritic at video games so i think it's going to happen eventually with movies too mm-hmm. movies and tv shows that nobody's going to look because there's a lot of shows that i've watched that i absolutely loved that metacritic I mean, not Metacritic, Rotten Tomatoes or whatever says sucked. And there's some shows that Rotten Tomatoes and all that said were good and the show sucked. Yeah. So, well, and, and see, this is, you know, there's a discussion to be had as, you know, the disconnect between audience score, which, by the way, audience score is garbage. It's, it's a useless metric. But the critic score, you know, but that's the thing is because everyone can give their fucking opinion like us, uh, Critic scores are only they're really people who do it more professionally. So they get to have like an actual, you know, they get to be counted in the Rotten Tomatoes score. And so because they're not anonymous, because they are more professional, their, you know, their ratings have have more weight than, you know, you and I. And, and as it should be, you know, uh, film criticism is a real thing, it takes real work. And I, we're just saying, hey. We liked or didn't like, and this is these are the things we didn't or didn't like. Um, <clears throat> but the disconnect between that and audience score uh, can mean something. But I think ultimately, hopefully, this will take us back to the day where, well, actually, the way you decide whether or not to watch something is if a critic that you usually, that you listen to, that you usually agree with, whether or not they like something. That's what, to me, that's more helpful than whatever the fucking percentage is. <clears throat> because yes. 
I, there, there are probably about three or four YouTube channels or, or podcasts whose reviews matter to me. And that's because I've learned over the, over years that more than likely if these guys say it's good, I'll probably like it. Right. And if they don't like it, I probably won't like it. That that's not a hundred percent of the time, but most likely. Right. And everyone else can fuck off. Like I'm not, and you know, God bless you, you know, listen to our, our review if you want to, if you think it makes sense to you. Similarly, you know, other people that I, that I follow, you know, I'll, I'll pay attention to what they have to say about it. But generally speaking, Rando McRanderson and his, you know, his one star review on the Acolyte or the boys don't mean shit to me. It means nothing. That's why the, the user reviews are useless. And the critics reviews at least tell me that people who do this shit for a living, who are jaded, who have seen a lot of shit, right? They've seen a ton of stuff. Still manage to like it. So maybe it's more important there. I don't know. But either way, fuck review bombing. You guys are lame as fuck. Um, also, people who are who give a five star reviews uh, just because, like, good fight the good fight, but like. Just stop fucking playing with those those mechanics. And in fact, let's just turn the shit off. You people have clearly showed that you cannot responsibly use these tools, so they just need to be taken away. So anyway, <clears throat> um, then when they do that, guess what they're gonna say? They're censoring us. Yeah, well, bitch, go get on YouTube. Nobody's stopping you from getting on YouTube and doing what we do, which and and leave a review. Stop. Here, how about this? Stop being anonymous cowards hiding behind your fucking keyboard. Get on YouTube, start a channel, and review the fucking thing and tell people in detail why you don't like the boys. But enough of this, you know, paragraph or, or whatever bullshit on, on IMDb. Get the fuck out of here. You are cowards and you're lame. And you you don't have the you don't have the courage of your convictions. You don't believe in what you say enough to get out there and put your fucking name behind it. That being said, what do you think about what we, what we had to say? Get down to the comment section, leave your thoughts there. And of course, you can always hit us up, super not funny show at gmail.com, blurred underscore force one on threads and on Instagram, super underscore not underscore funny show on TikTok. And while you're doing that, get down there, hit like on this video, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. All that good stuff helps to grow this channel, helps more people to see videos just like this. Until then, I've been Mo, your comedy extraordinaire on all things pop culture, joined by the anime expert, video game designer, and lover of all things superhero, my good friend Lottie. And we'll see you guys on the other side of the thread. Peace. Peace.